I know I wear these knickers. Man be sing don't bar and the most of them. Yeah. My opinion is just <clears throat> definitely something that has to be on the land. A part of it anyways. Or a good chunk of it. Learning whether plants or even hunting, fishing. Uh the stuff that our ancestors done before us and what we've learned here in the community and all that. I feel that's indigenous education in this area. Because I find it hard to say, like, indigenous education for everybody. Because there's different, well, as we know, there's different uh, areas. So, like, just for our language, for example, Nipsing language is based on our land in this area. So we have words that are just made for this, this land. How the formations and stuff are and uh and I know it's gonna be different for different places. So it's just that and indigenous education is I guess that's what makes it uh, more complicated where compared to like the how the ex ministry expectations are now or like to it's just say math or whatever it's for the whole whole place but indigenous education it's kind of has to be specific and put towards like that area so it's kind of hard to make it really like broad like that <clears throat> because because it's because it is different and one thing that i found out made di what was different is that i got to teach a powwow singing course and i was like oh freak right on this is gonna be <laughs> awesome and it was, it was awesome. And then we had some guys that were really, that were a little bit experienced already. So I got to just work with them. They developed me and I got to help develop them at the same time. But what, the challenge was that I had to teach backup singers. <laughs> so I'm like, so, back singing. Uh, I can't sing like a, a lady. So it made me think, and like, this is where indigenous education separates from like the mainstream education where like like men and women have very specific roles and that's where i find like difficulties in like in teaching so that was one where i had to teach well just show them the songs and i couldn't show them how to sing and i couldn't there wasn't a whole lot of teaching i could do but but uh they more they did more teaching uh, teaching us in that way so that's why i found like the difficult part of indigenous education or it separates i guess one big thing is well here like nipsing is where and beasting they're known for something by the water this <laughs> <laughs> and uh and our we're like our like our fishing was our biggest the fish were our biggest resource and and like helped us survive to this day we're still here and we're still a lot of, still doing some of the same stuff so i think fishing would be a big one trapping uh like a lot of land-based stuff would be because uh i guess i got to do i got to go hunting with some students myself and another teacher and uh, we took four we got to take four guys out again there's where it's separate eh? where our, our education is different and anyways we had four guys came out and we got to they got a chance to uh feel it was like to just like we just camped out in the bush and just got up early in the morning went and walked for hours until we found a place and moose coming it's right there and he took off <laughs> and then and then like three days of that and then finally we got a, a moose came out and we ended up got to take him down shot him and we got to cut him up and and then butcher him and all that stuff and that was pretty cool but that that was like a really cool way to show appreciation of food for our, our uh, young guys because to do all that work a whole week's 
it was a whole week that we had to do some get up to like just preparing and all that stuff and and um just walk tracking down that that moose and then we got to shoot him and then just like i said it shows the appreciation of the of the meat where now i could i guess i could finally understand why why um in our ceremonies like it's always like the animals and the fish and the plants and where how important it is definitely our language is is probably priority number one in my opinion to teach our language in Nipsing area and uh, our elders say that it's pretty important that we do keep our our dialect as close as we can to what they've they have taught I mean what they speak is I know some in some points we might not be able to because we may have lost some of that but it's important to keep our our language and like our language is in like a emergency state I guess we would say so uh, that would be one of the main ones like uh that have that in la in the la in the language as much as we can our language is it all ties in together at some point like our language is, and then I used to hear people say all the time oh language is tied up in your culture I'm like I don't know. I didn't really understand until the more I learned about the language. I was like, oh, that's what that person meant. <laughs> or not just one person. It was a bunch of people would say that, our elders and all that. And it was true. Our language is tied in. And then our, like, our specific uh, worldview and identity comes from our language. Like, just just little things, how we, how words kind of break down hanging out with the elders and they just say like it I don't know just when they say it, they joke around I wish uh, they said it's because you the language is so descriptive they could think in pictures it's almost like playing a movie in your head that's what they that's how descriptive it is like, oh, I want to get there one day to be able to see what they're saying like language is really important and like also, I think it's important, like, as I said, with our language, is, it's it's meant to, like, keep it as close as we can. But it's good to learn other dialects and stuff, too, just so you can, just so you can understand. And this one guy named Falcon McLeod, and he said that, <laughs> <laughs> he said that, uh, oh, man, he's learning about different dialects. And he said, I learned more about Nipsing dialect through there. And I was, oh, yeah, yeah. Then I started learning more about different dialects. I was like, freak, he's, he's right that guy. <laughs> that uh, learning different dialects helped me with our explanation when I get to teach my language. So it just broadens your, can't go wrong with more knowledge. So, so that was, that's one of them. And like, uh, I think going around to learning from other communities too. But also not just taking, giving to like to to other communities of their knowledge and how they how they do things and always remember that that's where I came from. Always remember where where you learned from. And to and so it just keeps <laughs> just keeps you humble I guess when you think that way. I guess I'd like them to hear like a little bit of my personal stories of where where I traveled and the places I've been, and and hopes that that empowers them to do the same thing. Or or some people like like my mother, she's she doesn't want to, she doesn't travel around as much, but she has so much knowledge of Nipsing, and it, whether it is they like to travel or do that, it's nice to like to stick around but learn to learn their the stories of each place like and it's cool to travel around in uh, different areas to hear different stories too because you can, you can hear where the similarities are and they usually all connect somehow like freaks me out how like a culture from here and then you go way out west it's the same story and just little tweaks here and there but same stuff for sure, I'd like to see uh, 
immersion school and like just you get I seen this just watch this video I can't find it anymore on YouTube but it's like this I think they call it Wadu Kadading uh, from I think it's Minnesota or something where they it's an immersion school but a lot of very land based I get as far as way as you can from the they call them the four walls in the classroom where it's just like just chalk and that's cool that's important too like just to but to spend more time off the just outside sometimes you get to you get a group of students oh I want to go outside go outside too hot <laughs> too much bugs then we go back inside and they want to go back up so it's sometimes you can't find the right spot <laughs> But uh, that's one, like a language, like a school, like that, to, especially for the young ones. And I think now we're lucky that we have a, we, uh, well, I was going to say that I heard that, um, was it Anton Troyer said it, and that where it really stuck out to me, it's that when uh, he said that we need indigenous educators, too to educate our indigenous people and it's because uh i went to this conference one time and this lady said how do you uh how would we get like more indigenous students to say want to become teachers and all that stuff and, and i said we have to hire indigenous student teachers and stuff just to or have them around just not just around, but have them in those positions and make it a priority because that's for, like, um, I think, and myself, like, the ones that really move me forward are the, the ones that are set an example for me to go to or the indigenous people for me. So, like, George Coochie and Muriel Sawyer, they're in those positions of that made me want to go there be, just because of them of what they've done and how to how they impacted me and how I was able to relate so I think indig having a lot of indigenous educators too found this quote this one time quoting a lot of people here <laughs> Steve Wood from Northern Cree he said uh, his quote was one of the most like I remember when I first heard it what it did to me like kind of hit me right in my spirit and heart, head, wherever, hit it, hit all spots. But it was said, uh, <clears throat> if you believe in yourself, who you are, and where you come from, uh, it will play you. It'll, oh, and then more importantly, your language, it will take you places you haven't even dreamed of. And he said, keep doing a good thing, and good things, and uh, good things will happen. And it really, really hit. Like, cause it was at the life for, in, in the point in my life where I was just learning my culture, my language, and it was starting to take me places, like singing. Got to go to, I got a time as far as like Winnipeg and, and different places around here. But um, uh, where the first few words too is like to believe in yourself. Yeah, you, and before you get to believe in yourself. So you got to understand where you come from. It uh, helps you believe in where yourself. I believe in yourself because the more you learn about who, like your community, you're learning about yourself. Learning like, cause like learn about. Then you go even further, like the creation stories and stuff, and you learn even more about yourself. It's just like, holy man, it's so. Like, I think that's where a lot of our Young people are so um, hard on themselves. Like, I teach at a high school. It's a, almost 100% indigenous students. And they say that, uh, and a lot of them come with, like, very, very low self-esteem or none at all. And I feel like a lot of times they're just missing, they're missing... And the understanding of where they come from, and missing that, and I find like the scene that happened where 
a lot of our students learned who they were through I don't know, some some through the drum, some just went and fire kept for over the years, sat by a fire. Some of them were uh, uh, they learned through those times. And uh, this is another just a side story. Got uh, here. I mean, my first class I got to teach, I got to see these graduate them graduate. So I got like uh, there was like. Singers, we had singers. They've been singing. We try. We we got to go do some little bit of traveling within the area with that group. So it was like it was pretty cool. And also, so like they did so much and all that stuff, and they dedicated themselves towards that drum. And uh, like even even uh, gave up drugs and alcohol during that time during that course. Uh, so they. But at the graduation, we're all singing. You know, that we they sang, and they're all graduating and all that stuff. And I'm like, after graduation, it was like, oh, it was a nice ceremony. But my my one of my coworkers, his name is James Horner. He was, he said something. He's like, did you notice that? I'm like, what? What is it? He's like, he said every one of those guys at the drum got an award. He's like, I was like. I didn't really notice that, but now he said, like, everyone, there was either, like, the culture award, even the academic award, they clean up on all the Nabezing awards, I'm just like, free, I never thought it would like that, but yeah, that's true, like, but, uh, just gave him something to believe in, and it took off with it.